What is going on everyone? How are you all doing? This is your Carlo here at Magna Crypto, back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a multi-million dollar hack that occurred on the Thor Chain network and also going to be looking at Kazama and Polkadot regarding the parachain auctions because there was a massive development on there. And of course, we're going to be breaking down the market as per usual. So let's not waste any time and get straight to it. Cue the intro. Before we get started, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, like this video, would very much appreciate it, and it's all free. And also, if you want to learn the fundamentals, um, TA, fundamental analysis, go ahead and click on the link in the description. And lastly, if you want to join my private Telegram group where I give more regular insight, more TA, chart, things of that nature, go ahead, go ahead and click on the link in the description. With that out of the way though, let's get straight into today's news. So ThorChain, which has done very, very well actually in the last 12 months, one of the uh, highest performers, um, unfortunately, was subject to two hacks in the last week, both um, totaling around $8 million. Um, so let's get straight into it. The cross-chain DeFi protocol ThorChain suffered another major hack for $8 million. Keyword, another. Last week, the protocol was drained with a further $8.3 million in a separate attack. The anonymous hackers warned they, that they found multiple critical issues and could have struck much greater damage, such as embezzling large amounts of Bitcoin, Binance coin, Lycan coin, and many other cryptocurrencies. In its turn, ThorChain said that the repeated hacking assault and a serious issue for the community and the project, admitting that the pain is real, even though its treasury can cover the funds, the DeFi protocol would like to see the end of the repeating problem. And although, like they said, although the hackers took multi you know, millions from ThorChain, they actually did it to prove a point. And I think these are called white, uh, white hackers or white hatters. And, you know, they've exposed a problem which ThorChain, ThorChain needs to solve immediately. Otherwise, it could be much, much bigger. It could have been hundreds of millions, perhaps. So the attack happened last week, uh, another attack that happened last week, just seven days ago, ThorChain suffered another multi-million secure dollar security hack breach. In the beginning, the stolen amount remained unconfirmed as the initial estimation showed that it was more than 13,000 EVE, worth 27 million at today's prices. However, the protocols team later updated the information with new numbers of 4,000 EVE, or about 8.3 million similarly the team promised that the treasury has the necessary funds to compensate all victims and ask for for the hackers to get in touch and they and it quotes while the treasury has the funds to cover the stolen amount we request the hacker get in contact with the team to discuss the return of funds and a bounty uh, commensurate with the discovery so you know they want to basically obviously solve this problem so they're reaching out to the hackers and maybe if the hackers are actually there to help, uh, you know, the, the network, then they'll get in touch to just get a bounty in the end. Hopefully that is the end result. But these things, unfortunately, still happen. They were much more prevalent in the last bull run and even afterwards because crypto was such a such a new market. But now that it's advanced, uh, a lot of cryptocurrencies are more advanced and less prone to attack. So even though these things are much, much less common, um, especially with the more advanced cryptocurrencies like ThorChain, basically the ones in top 20, top 30, uh, they still happen, unfortunately. Um, they are actually still fairly prevalent with the smaller kind of shit coins, especially the ones that are launched on the Binance Smart Chain, because it's just, it's just a, a lot of those coins are just shit coins and hype coins. Uh, that you know those pump and dump schemes so it happens much more frequently uh, on coins that launch on there uh, but hopefully you know thought chain can bounce back from this but to be honest two attacks in one week is quite devastating because again it's a short time frame and they were done I don't know with relative ease I guess if they were able to do it twice um, so they're gonna have to do some proper proper 
uh, checks and audits to really gain the trust back of the community uh, and also their reputation because a double attack in a short space of time is a massive blow to a, a project's reputation. That's the main thing. So let's move over to the next article regarding Polkadot, Kazama and Parachains. So DeFi Hub and Parachain Akala has launched its Karura Swap Dex alongside what calls uh, what it calls the first trustless trading pair in the Polkadot and Kazama ecosystem. The Akala Foundation has recently announced the launch of its Dex Karura Swap on the Kazama and Polkadot e ecosystem with its so-called first trusted trading pair KSIM to KAR already available for trading. Over $3.4 million has already been locked, uh, total locked value. Friday's an announcement, Akala noted that the KSM KAR pair currently has over $3 million in TV, uh, TVL and will now be traded on the Carrera Swap platform. So this is massive, massive news um, for the entire ecosystem, showing that it is moving forward in its roadmap. As I've said many times covering uh, KSM and Polkadot, this is the necessary step for Polkadot to finally go live with its parachains because of course um, Kazama is the practice, it's the trial grounds for it to you know tweak out any issues before going live on Polkadot. So now that we have the first DEX live with the trading pair, this is massive and already a few million dollars in total value locked is a huge sign that people are interested. Um, to finish off, just last month, Karura won the first parachain slot auctions conducted by Polkadot's Canary Network, Kuzama, with 501,000 KSM, which is mo worth more than $100 million, raised by its community. This just shows the, the power of the community and the kind of capital within this community, uh, and hence why this is one of the closest competitors for Ethereum. You know, this is the, remember this is um, Kuzama, which is the practice ground for Polkadot. So imagine how much uh, capital is going to be available, the community power that will be available to Polkadot when that goes live. So this is huge and definitely a, um, a sign, a message to Ethereum that they can really, um, you know, shoot for first place, potentially. I mean, it's a long shot, but they have the capability. So let's move over to the charts now. So we'll uh, have a quick look at uh, Rune, which is the token used on ThorChain. Now it could have been because of the two attacks that happened, it most likely was, but also the entire market was uh, dropping, but massive, massive drops in the last two weeks uh, from $6.20 all the way down to $3.50 and even lower down to, you know, the, the low $3. So if we look at it, there, there is a massive wick right here. That seems to be a key level and that's just above, that is at $3. So that could become support. Um, again, the fact that these two wicks have exactly hit that level. But of course, before we get excited about a reversal, we need to see a green candle going back to the upside. If that does not hold for Kuzama, I mean for Rune, on the weekly time frame, the next major um, support level, make, next major key level, is all the way down to 150. If that happens, if it breaks this, you know, loose support, then that could drop all the way down to that level, which would be catastro catastrophic for Rune. Um, but we want what we want to see is a reversal. Uh, perhaps if we move to the daily time frame, we can see some kind of reversal. You know, you've got these two levels potentially double bottom. So there is actually potential for a reversal if uh, it's able to break past this level right here of $4.20, uh, a recent high. If it's able to get past them and then retest it as support, that would be a successful reversal on the daily time frame, I think. But there is also some more resistance ahead at $5.50. So there's some challenges ahead, but it's potential if this turns into a, a double bottom that it reverses. 
So let's see, maybe the double hack might not be as damaging as we thought. Let's move over to Kazama and then we'll have a look at Polkadot and have a look at the two big boys in the market before wrapping this video up. Let's move over to the weekly time frame. So Kazama continue to drop below um, the low that was created at 178, unfortunately. Uh, right now it's looking to close there. Again, unfortunately, if it does, then it might open up the floor to continue dropping down to 100. It's, it's possible. Even though there was some nice bullish uh, news, uh, the, the fundamental, the, the technicals are not supporting this. The only thing that's in its way, which I which I drew last in the last breakdown, is these two wicks stopping at 150. Perhaps on the daily time frame is showing a bit more support. So on the daily time frame, we can see that this level right here, 175, uh, is a key level. Um, unfortunately, it tried to reverse and break past it. However, it got rejected three rejections and it's now heading below. So if Kazama wants to reverse, it needs to get back above this level and retest it as support. Um, otherwise, it's probably gonna keep dropping all the way down to the low hundreds. You know, there's a few uh, highs and lows in between, in between, but the major levels are around $100. So it might be uh, a red couple of weeks coming for Kazama, which again, is contrary to the fundamental news, but the technicals are just painting a different picture, what can I say? Similar situation with Polkadot. Uh, again, unfortunately, it closed uh, um, below some key support at 14 or $15, with a massive drop below it, even below these two wicks. The only bullish thing now is it actually touched uh, $10 with a massive wick. This kind of wick is actually bullish because it shows a lot of demand, a lot of liquidity was picked up, However, what we want to see now is a reverse. We need to see that reverse and go back to the upside, attacking $15 once again. If we don't see that reversal soon uh, and, and turn this candle into a green, then unfortunately we're going to keep going lower, down towards 10. Uh, probably I don't see it going any further than that. But again, if it, does, if, if it doesn't reverse anytime soon, that that's where it's going to head $10 initially and then below that at 9.34. Now let's have a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is actually looking like it wants to reverse. So of course we had a break below 32, which was a key, key support level, broke below. Uh, and I did mention one of the scenarios that is possible, which happened here, is a break above key level and then reversing back, uh, back. so like a false breakout essentially. This could have been a false breakout. So this candle is very bullish massive demand picked up and now it's looking to go to the upside so now what we want to see similar to what i said about polkadot we want to see that demand push on uh, above 32,300. so it's just below that right now but for the week we want to get past back above there and close above to turn that back into support so this candle is a bullish one for sure as you can see massive demand now which needs to continue going forward. So let's see how it performs in the coming week. If it gets above 32.8 or 32.3, then 34,700 will, the, will be the next uh, target for sure. Now let's finish off this video with Ethereum. I did mention many, many times um, that this is in a falling wedge, which is a bullish pattern. Now potentially coming up, uh, the major event that's coming up is ETH 2.0. Um, two major upgrades are happening in August, which is in two weeks, so or two to three weeks. So this could be a bullish um, pattern that comes out. Now it did uh, wick out several times, however it's closed within the wedge. So now if it can get above this counter trend line and close, then it might just rock it to the upside all the way towards 26, 2700. Um, if it closes below, then for sure 1700 will be the major level uh, of support. So let's see, let's hope that Ethereum breaks above this wedge uh, and, and runs to the upside. 
So to summarize, um, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum, actually only Bitcoin and Ethereum, for the ones that I've covered today, they're the ones that are looking like they want to reverse back to the upside and carry on the bull run. Because you can see Bitcoin, there was a nice bullish candle this week. It wants to push back above 32,000, the major support level, and it wants to prove that last week was a false breakout. So if we can continue like this, it's going to be a massive, massive uh, move to the upside for both these Bitcoins, the leaders, and then of course the rest of the market will follow. So let's be optimistic. Uh, let's hope that it continues what it started this week, continues it into next week. Uh, many people think that the bull run will continue and Bitcoin will get to 100k by the end of this year. So, you know, this could be the lowest point uh, during this bull run. So let's see how it finishes. Let's see what happens next week. But this week was a, was a good week, a nice reversal. So hopefully you got some value from that. See you in the next video. Peace.